Welcome to the 21st lecture of the course Representations of Finite Groups. We will continue our study of representations of symmetric groups in this lecture. Today we are going to talk about Young Tableau and Young Tabloid. Let us begin with this definition. If lambda is a partition of n, then a lambda tableau, then a lambda tableau also called a young tableau of shape lambda is an array t lambda of integers 1 to n in the boxes of the young diagram of lambda. So basically a lambda tableau is simply the young diagram with the numbers 1 to n filled in the n boxes. Let us see an example. Take the partition say lambda equals to 3, 2, 1. Take this partition lambda then lambda is a partition of the number n where n is 6. Then the young diagram of shape lambda has 3 boxes in the top row, 2 boxes in the second row and 1 box in the last row. And then a lambda tableau or a young tableau of shape lambda is just an arrangement of numbers 1 to 6 in these 6 boxes. So for example, I could just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is one lambda tableau. As you can see, I am going to have 6 factorial of them. I could have 3, 2, 1. 4, 5, 6. Let us write a couple of more of them. 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 6 and so on. Okay. So there will be 6 factorial lambda tableaus. You may recall from the previous lecture that given an integer and the set of all partitions of that integer, we define an order called the domination order on the set of all partitions of that integer. It is very important to know how two partitions are related under this domination order and for that purpose we need lambda tableau. So some information on lambda tableau of two partitions of an integer help us conclude whether one partition is bigger than or equal to the other partition or vice versa. Let lambda equals to say lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on lambda l and mu equals to mu1, mu2 and so on mu m be two partitions of n, be two partitions of an integer n. Suppose that t lambda is a lambda tableau and S mu is a mu tableau with some condition such that entries in same row of S mu are located in different columns of T lambda. Then the conclusion is the following. Then there exists a lambda tableau. Let us denote it by u lambda such that it satisfies the following two conditions. Condition number one, the jth columns of t lambda and u lambda have the same elements for all j bigger than or equals to 1 and less than or equals to l. The second condition is the following. The entries of the first i rows of s mu, the entries of the first i rows of s mu belong to the first i rows of this u lambda for all i bigger than or equal to 1 and the number of rows in mu is m so less than or equal to m. The entries in the first i rows of s mu belong to the first i rows of u lambda for all i bigger than or equal to 1 less than or equal to m and as a consequence of this we will show that if lambda and mu are two partitions of an integer and if t lambda 
and if t lambda and s mu are the lambda tableau and the mu tableau respectively such that elements of a row of s mu lie in different columns of t lambda then lambda is bigger than or equal to mu in terms of domination order we are going to prove the following for each r bigger than or equal to 1 less than or equal to m we construct a lambda tableau we construct a lambda tableau let us call it t lambda r with the following two properties the jth columns of the jth columns of t lambda and t r lambda contain the same set of element for all j bigger than or equal to 1 less than or equal to l second property the entries in the first i rows of s mu belong to first i rows of t r lambda for all i bigger than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to r so let us prove this we are going to prove it by induction on r so we proceed by induction on r let us consider the case r equals to 1 first suppose that r is 1 we are given the information that entries in the same row of s mu are located in different columns of t lambda so take an entry in the first row of s mu let x be an entry in the first row of s mu then x will belong to some column of t lambda so let x belong to to the column let us denote this column index by x column cx of t lambda if x already lie in the first row of t lambda then there is nothing to do if x doesn't lie in the first row of t lambda then we swap x with the entry in the first row of the column column cx of t lambda so in this process we have modified our lambda tableau t lambda uh, by swapping x with an entry on the top row of the column and this gives rise to a new uh, tableau of shape lambda we call it t1 lambda the given hypothesis is that entries in a single row of s mu lie in different columns of t lambda so we look at the first row of s mu and pick an entry x this entry lie in some column let us say cx of t lambda if it is already on the top row of t lambda we don't do anything and we go to the next entry in the first row of s mu if it is again in the top row we don't do anything if it is not in the top row then wherever it is we swap the entry of the top row in that call intersecting with the column cx with this particular entry and we do it for every entry in the first row of s mu after finite many steps we obtain a lambda tableau let us call it t1 lambda which has a property that all the entries of the first row of s mu lie in the first row of this t1 lambda secondly this t1 lambda has this property that all the entries in the columns of t1 lambda are same as the entries in the that particular column of t lambda repeating this process for each entry of the first row of s mu we get lambda tableau t1 lambda which has property a and b so thus base step of the induction holds now suppose that we have found a lambda tableau t r lambda of shape lambda satisfying conditions a and b for r bigger than or equal to 1 and strictly less than m we now want to construct the next lambda tableau t r plus 1 lambda with the desired properties a and b let x be an entry in the r plus first row of s mu 
Now again by given hypothesis, this entry lie in some column of T R lambda. So let us denote that column by C X. Again we argue the same way. If X already lie in the first R plus 1 rows of T R lambda, then we are already done. Suppose that X does not lie in the first R plus 1 rows of T R lambda. Then what is the possibility here? Because X is in the column C X of T R lambda and X does not belong to the first R plus 1 rows of T R lambda. This implies that the column C X must intersect the R plus first row. Because if the column C X does not intersect the R plus first row and X is in the column C X that means X has already appeared in the first R plus 1 rows of T R lambda because the partitions are in decreasing order. It follows that the R plus first row of T R lambda must intersect the column C X. Suppose this is the Young diagram of the partition lambda and after plugging in entries the numbers let this represent the lambda tableau uh, T R lambda of shape lambda T R lambda of shape lambda and suppose it has entries some entries say uh, N1, N2, N3, N4 and so on. Let us say this is the R plus first row and suppose the entry X lie in the column C X. So suppose this is the column C X. Now here we see that the column C X is not meeting the R plus first row. That means the entry X has already appeared in the first R plus one rows of T R lambda. Therefore, if the entry X has not appeared in the first R plus one rows of T R lambda, the column C X must meet the R plus first row. In this case, we proceed as we did in the base of the induction R equals to one case. We swap X with the element in the R plus first row and column CX of T R lambda. Once we do this, we see that properties A and B of T R lambda are intact. They are not lost. In this process, we keep the properties A and B of T R lambda. So thus we have dealt with the element X in the R plus first row of S mu. Now repeat the same process for other entries of the R plus first row of S mu. Since by the given hypothesis entries in this R plus first row of S mu lie in different columns of T R lambda, it does not really matter which entry we pick first. After finitely many steps, we arrive at a lambda tableau T R plus 1 lambda with the desired properties A and B. We get a lambda tableau T R plus 1 lambda with properties A and B. Finally, we take u lambda to be simply t m lambda. Then we see that t m lambda is a lambda tableau with the desired property that the jth column of t lambda and u lambda have the same set of elements just by the way we have constructed these t r lambdas. And entries in the first i rows of s mu belong to the first i rows of u lambda for each i bigger than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to m. This completes the proof of the proposition. Let me illustrate the previous proposition by an example. Take say n equals to 8 lambda to be this partition 5 to 1 and mu to be the partition 4 to 2. Let us take lambda one lambda tableau and one mu tableau satisfying the hypothesis of the previous proposition. What is the hypothesis? Entries on each row of S mu should lie in different columns of T lambda. Take T lambda to be this lambda tableau. So I have to draw first draw the Young diagram. Take the entries in this lambda tableau T lambda as 8, 5, 4, 2, 7, 1, 3 and finally 6 and take S mu I have to now plug in some entries so entries are 1, 2, 3, 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड एट लेट एस सी वेदर द टैबलोज टी लैमडा एंड एस मी सेटिसफाई द हाइपोथिस ऑफ द गिवन प्रोपोजिशन और नॉट लुक एट द एंट्रीज इन द फर्स्ट रो ऑफ एस मी द एंट्रीज आर वन टू थ्री फोर डू दे लाई इन डिफरेंट कॉलम्स ऑफ टी लैमडा वन लाई इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम टू लाई इन द फोर्थ कॉलम थ्री लाई इन द सेकेंड कॉलम फोर लाई इन द थर्ड कॉलम सो द फर्स्ट रो एंट्रीज ऑफ एस मी लाई इन डिफरेंट कॉलम्स ऑफ टी लैमडा वट अबाउट फाइव एंड सिक्स फाइव लाई इन द सेकेंड कॉलम ऑफ टी लैमडा एंड सिक्स लाई इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम ऑफ टी लैमडा फाइनली सेवन एंड एट सो सेवन एंड एट आर इन वन रो ऑफ एस मी एंड दे लाई इन डिफरेंट कॉलम्स नेमली कॉलम फर्स्ट एंड कॉलम फिफ्थ ऑफ टी लैमडा दस ए हाइपोसिस ऑफ द गिवन प्रोपोजिशन इज सेटिसफाइड एंड फॉलोइंग द प्रोसीजर ऑफ प्रूफ वी शुड बी एबल टू गेट अ न्यू लैमडा टैबलो यू लैमडा विद द डिजायर प्रॉपर्टीज सो हाउ डू यू ऑप्टेन टी वन लैमडा टी वन लैमडा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी ड्रॉ द यंग डायग्राम ऑफ लैमडा then you look at the entries in the first row of s mu 1 2 3 4 4 look at the entry 1 the entry 1 lie in the first column second row of t lambda so we want to put it in the first row so we interchange 1 and 8 so we write 1 here and 8 here now look at the entry 2 where is entry 2 entry 2 is already in the first row of t lambda so we don't do anything look at the entry 4 entry 4 is already in the first row of t lambda so we don't do anything the entry 3 is in the second row of t lambda so we interchange 3 and 5 so that 3 and 5 so that the column is not changed so therefore we write 3 here and 5 here and other entries we keep unchanged this is how we obtain t1 lambda and as we can see t1 lambda has the desired property that entries in the first row of s mu lie in first row of t1 lambda and secondly t1 lambda and t lambda have the same set of entries on each column because we simply obtain t1 lambda from t lambda by permitting elements in a column now let us obtain t2 lambda so t2 lambda we will obtain from t1 lambda by comparing with s mu under the given hypothesis so first row is already done look at the second row of s mu number 5 number 5 is already in the second row of t1 lambda so we don't need to do anything look at number 6 in s mu number 6 is in the third row of t1 lambda so we can interchange 6 and 8 so thus we get 6 and 8 here now again look at t2 lambda t2 lambda differs from t1 lambda just by permutation permitting elements of a column and hence it differs from t lambda just by permitting columns furthermore t2 lambda has a desired property that entries in the first row of s lambda s mu lie in the first row of t2 lambda entries in the second row of s mu lie in the second row of t2 lambda and entries in the third row of s mu lie in the first three rows of t2 lambda hence t2 lambda is the desired lambda tableau with the help of the previous proposition we will now prove what we call domination lemma this is the result which tells us when a given partition is bigger than equal to the other partition under some mild condition on the lambda tableaus the conditions are exactly the condition we had in the previous proposition so let's prove it domination lemma let lambda and mu be partitions of n suppose that t lambda and s mu are lambda tableau and mu tableau respectively such that entries in a row of s mu lie in different columns of t lambda then lambda dominates mu very nice result so lambda and mu are partitions of the given integer and t lambda and s mu are lambda tableau and mu tableau respectively with the given property that if you pick any row of s mu the entries there lie in different columns of t lambda so by previous proposition by preceding 
proposition there exists a lambda tableau let us call it u lambda such that u lambda and t lambda have the same set of entries in each column and entries in the first i rows of s mu lie in the first i rows of u lambda so let us write lambda equals to say lambda 1 lambda 2 and so on lambda l and mu equals to let us say mu 1 mu 2 and so on mu of m then lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus so on plus lambda i denote the number of entries denote the number of entries in the first i rows of u lambda in the first i rows of u lambda which also denote the number of entries in the first i rows of t lambda similarly mu1 plus mu2 plus so on plus mu i denote the number of entries in the first i rows of s mu but u lambda and s mu have the property that entries in the first i rows of s mu lie in the first i rows of u lambda that is how we constructed u lambda this implies that lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus so on plus lambda i is bigger than or equals to mu 1 plus mu 2 plus so on plus mu i and this is exactly is the definition of domination order which implies that lambda is bigger than or equals to mu this completes the proof of the domination lemma next we discuss what are called column stabilizers so let sn be the symmetric group then sn act on the set 1 2 and so on by permitting these elements for a subset x of the set 1 2 n let s sub x denote the group permutations in sn viewing them as permutations of the whole set that fix every element outside x that fix every element outside x for example if we take n equals to 5 and take x equals to say 2 comma 3 then what is sx sx is all those permutations which fix everything outside this of course this is the identity element and the permutation 2 3 let lambda be a partition of n and t lambda a lambda tableau then the column stabilizer of this lambda tableau t lambda is the subgroup of sn that preserves columns of t lambda notice that the symmetric group sn act on the set of all lambda tableau if you take any lambda tableau then you the symmetric group can permute the entries in this young diagram and give you another lambda tableau the column stabilizer of a given lambda tableau is that subgroup of the symmetric group it can permute the entries of the column but one entries of a column cannot go to another column in other words sigma belong to the column stabilizer of t lambda if and only if sigma i and i are in the same column of t lambda let us see an example consider the lambda tableau t lambda which is given by this diagram and the entries are 1 3 7 4 5 2 6 uh, so this c sub t lambda is the notation for the column stabilizer of the lambda tableau t lambda and what is this this consists of those permutations which preserve the columns okay so that means if i want to preserve the first column which has entries 1 4 3 so in the symmetric group on s7 i have to look at those permutations which keep the first column fixed so basically it is just the symmetric group on the set uh, 1 4 2 in terms of the notation that we set at the top of the slide this should be symmetric group on the set 1 4 2 times symmetric group on the set 3 5 6 
times the symmetric group on the singleton set 7. It turns out that these groups have only identity in column and therefore this is a direct product. So this column stabilizer CT lambda is a subgroup of the symmetric group S7 and it is an internal direct product of these three subgroups S of 142, S of 356 and S of 7. So S of 7 we can actually ignore because this is just the identity. It has no non-trivial permutation. Let us define an equivalence on the set of all lambda tableau of shape lambda. We say that two lambda tableau are equivalent if they have the same set of elements on each row. Since they all of them are of shape lambda, so therefore each row will have the same set or same number of entries. We declare that two lambda tableau are equivalent if they have the same set of elements in each row. Define an equivalence on the set of all lambda tableau as follows. We say that two lambda tableau T lambda and S lambda are equivalent if they have the same set of elements in each row of their diagram. This is easily shown to be an equivalence relation on the set of all lambda tableau. We denote the equivalence class of a lambda tableau by T lambda bracket. Let us see an example. Look at these two lambda tableau. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let us add one more like say 5 here. And the other one. They have to have the same shape. So I will make the same young diagram. And then here it is 3, 1, 2 and 5, 4. You can see that the first row of both the lambda tableau, let us call this as T lambda, this as S lambda. The first row of T lambda and the first row of S lambda have the same set of elements. And the second row of S lambda and second row of T lambda have the same element. So therefore they are equivalent. On the other hand, if we take 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and if we take this is not equivalent to this because the first row of the first lambda tableau has 1, 2, 3 where the first row of the second lambda tableau has 4, 1, 2. There is a special name for the equivalence class of a lambda tableau. An equivalence class of a lambda tableau is called a lambda tabloid. And lambda tabloids are going to play a very crucial role in defining the irreducible representation corresponding to the partition lambda. And later on we will show that all those representations uh, form a complete list of inequivalent irreducible representations of our symmetric group Sn. There is a natural action of the symmetric group Sn on the set of all lambda tableau of shape lambda. So if you fix a partition of a positive integer n and take the collection of all lambda tableau then the symmetric group act on this set. How does it do? Lambda tableau is a young diagram with the entries with the numbers 1, 2 and filled in the boxes and the symmetric group simply any permutation of the set 1, 2 and will permute them and you get another lambda tableau. So there is an action here and in fact it's a transitive action. The action is in fact transitive. What is more interesting is that this action descends to an action on the set of all lambda tabloids. So let T superscript lambda denote the set of all lambda tabloids. Lambda tabloids are equivalence classes of lambda tableau. Then we have this proposition. The symmetric group Sn acts on T lambda by defining the following. You take a permutation sigma and take an element in T lambda. Elements of T lambda are lambda tabloids. They are equivalent classes of lambda tableau. So you take T lambda and equivalence class and define it to be, as we have noted in the first line, the symmetric group has a natural action on the set of all lambda tableau. So you just apply it on the corresponding tableau and take its corresponding equivalence class. The proof is extremely elementary. We simply have to note that if two lambda tableau are related, then any permutation of them is also related. The proof follows immediately. 
by noting that if natural numbers i and j lie in the same row of sigma t lambda and sigma s lambda then sigma inverse i and sigma inverse of j lie in the same row of t lambda and s lambda and conversely i would like to make a remark here the symmetric group sn act transitively on the set of all lambda tabloids so let t sub lambda be the be the lambda tabloid corresponding to the lambda tableau which has the numbers 1 2 so on up to lambda 1 in the first row and then lambda 1 plus 1 and so on up to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 in the second row lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus so on plus lambda i minus 1 plus 1 and so on lambda 1 plus so on plus lambda i in the ith row so basically the integers 1 to n we are just arranging them in increasing order as we move on the young diagram from along the rows from top to bottom and from left to right the equivalence class of this lambda tableau we denote it by t sub lambda and now by orbit stabilizer theorem we have that size of t lambda is same as size of sn modulo the stabilizer of t sub lambda but what is t sub lambda t sub lambda is the lambda tabloid which has 1 2 3 4 up to lambda 1 in the first row lambda 1 plus 1 and so on lambda 1 plus lambda 2 in the second row and so on uh, you know what this stabilizer is therefore this is just same as n factorial by lambda 1 factorial lambda 2 factorial and so on lambda l factorial so we know the size of the set of all lambda tabloids t superscript lambda thus we are in a very good situation now so recall the symmetric group sn act transitively transitively on the set t superscript lambda of all lambda tabloids so we have an action of our group sn on t lambda so we can talk about the corresponding permutation representation so let m superscript lambda be the vector space spanned by set of all lambda tabloids t superscript lambda then we have the corresponding permutation representation we write it as phi superscript lambda from the symmetric group sn to gl of m superscript lambda this is a very important representation but we know that permutation representation are not irreducible unless the size of the set is just one if the set has more than one element then the sum of this uh, set element viewed as basis of m lambda will be fixed and it will be a proper g invariant subspace but this phi lambda will have an irreducible constituent which we are looking for the representation phi lambda is not irreducible but will give rise to an irreducible representation which we denote by psi lambda of the symmetric group sn and this psi lambda is our desired irreducible representation of the symmetric group sn corresponding to the partition lambda of n so we will continue this discussion in the next class i will stop here thank you